Looks like a couple of people taking a hike in a beautiful part of Northern California, but there's so much more to that video than that. These are searchers, and they're out there looking for Johnny Davis. His friends and family have been wondering where he is for well over a month now. These cases are sometimes the toughest, lost in the wilderness. But it's time that we turn on the searchlight for Johnny Davis. Welcome back to Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for caring about these cases like I do. Before I get into today's video, I want to give a very special thank you to Tina. Tina was very motivated to help with this case. She knows Johnny's family and has said that they, they're pretty amazing people that are actually helping her out with some stuff that she's been going through. Once she heard that Johnny's mom had a missing son, she put the connection together and said, I got to get this over to John to feature. So that's what we're going to do here today. And before we start today's video, I just wanted to let Johnny's family know um, you're not alone. I, I know it seems like the coverage, media coverage is basically local at this point. Nothing really at a national level. Uh, no other videos that I could find on YouTube even talking about this case. This case is very early on. Um, but we've already hit that 30 day mark where the family's struggling a little bit. They're not sure about law enforcement's efforts. Are they giving it enough? We're going to try to raise exposure to all of those concerns and hopefully motivate some further action, not just beha on the behalf of law enforcement, but also the public out here, because this is a, a family that needs support. And there's a few different ways that we can support them, I think, and we'll definitely be touching on those as we go through the video today. But let's go ahead and get started. Here's a picture of Johnny Davis, and I'm using one down below that I don't see too often in terms of the uh, posters that are out there as well. Some of the pictures I'm seeing of him, he looks a bit younger. And of course, I just wanna make sure that we're getting uh, a good series of photos out there just in case anyone might come across Johnny. Now, this is one of those cases where we're talking lost in wilderness. So is that possibility extremely high? You never know. Ultimately, Johnny has gone missing, uh, but he had enough supplies with him that he could theoretically be taking care of himself in some way. Uh, does it feel like that? I, I, I can't really answer that. Um, but we're going to do everything we can to help on all fronts as usual here. So, of course, also down below, you're going to see the phone number for the Mendocino County Sheriff's Office. If you do have any information on where Johnny might be, please call it in and make sure that they can act on it. Uh, there is no name as profile for this case yet. Like I said, uh, this disappearance is fairly recent, but I will be checking up with NamUs myself to make sure that a profile is in development. If it isn't, I will go ahead and get that entered. Um, Mendocino County, beautiful part of Northern California. Let's learn a little bit more about it from Wikipedia. Mendocino County located on the North coast of the U S state of California. As of the 2010 census, the population was over 87,000 people. The County seat is Ukiah. It's located approximately equidistant from the San Francisco Bay area and the California, Oregon border. California is just such a huge state. But if you just imagine San Francisco is kind of almost in the mid section of California between that and the very northern tip is where you would find Mendocino County. The county is noted for its distinctive Pacific Ocean coastline. Beautiful pictures that I've been seeing uh, its location along California's lost coast, redwood forests, wine production, microbrews and We've covered a couple cases that have touched on this area in particular. Um, views, liberal views about the use of cannabis and support for its legalization. In 2009, it was estimated that roughly one third of the economy was based on the cultivation of marijuana. Um, so, big part of the industry up there. And with that, there's always questions of could you potentially bump into some type of criminal element now yes you know marijuana is certainly legal for recreational use in california at this point um this has been going on in that area in terms of cultivation for a long long time predates that law coming into effect so there's always a question and we've looked into missing persons cases where specifically they were concerned about um 
you know, someone working on a cannabis farm and what type of elements they'd be interacting with there, particularly uh, when you have someone that you love in that type of situation and they go missing. But let's go ahead and continue over at Facebook with a post from the Mendocino County Sheriff's Office. This was posted on October 25th. The Mendocino County Sheriff's Office and Mendocino County, County Search and Rescue Team are currently conducting a missing person search in the area of Highway 162 at the Eight Mile Bridge near Covello, California. The missing person was last seen yesterday, October 24th, in the early morning hours while camping, hunting with family. Now, the information on this case, like I mentioned at the start, is a little thin because we're basically only getting local coverage. Uh, and when you're talking about news publications of that size, they don't always have a reporter that they can cut loose for a week on a story like this. Uh, so I'm kind of melding together information from that local coverage and some of the social media information that the family is putting out there. Effectively, the family that was camping slash hunting was Johnny and his son. I believe it's his son named Adam. Uh, and I don't know if there's anyone else with them. I think it's just the two of them. We are going to see from the coverage that uh, they're in the tent. They're close to the Eel River. And effectively, uh, the river starts coming up into their tent. So in the middle of the night, they have to kind of wake up and figure out the situation. Adam decides he's going to go back to the car. Johnny says, well, I'm going to kind of move this stuff. And... I still want to get some camp or some more hunting in before I come back. And unfortunately, Adam doesn't see his father again. Uh, there is another child I know of. They've at least one. Um, Johnny also has a daughter. She's made some comments online we're going to share as we go forward as well. So let's start by taking a look at where this is happening. According to this post from the Mendocino County Sheriff's Office, they're saying uh, Highway 162 at the Eight Mile Bridge near Covello, California. So here is... California. Let's go ahead and drill it into Mendocino County. And the eight mile bridge was a little tough to find. Uh, thankfully, there was one poster they put out that had GPS coordinates. So uh, that was uh, very helpful. And we can see that it's a bridge. It is the 162 actually going over the Eel River. It looks like the river kind of splits here, or there's a creek that runs off the Eel River. Uh, but the Eel River continues east of here. And from what I understand, they were camping somewhere out in this area uh, east of where this bridge is. I think the bridge is just uh, kind of the easiest rally point. It's where most of the family and friend searches have been launched from as well. So the search gets started and very quickly they find an important component. There actually is another family member that's out there with them. Searchers look for missing Humboldt County Hunter near Covello, but only find his dog. Unfortunately, I'm not finding any details on the condition of the dog. I have to say that uh, this is the next day that they're they're finding his dog. So I think it's somewhat safe to assume, but I have to put it out there with a grain of salt that the dog is alive, that the dog is fine. I don't know if the dog has been used uh, in search efforts of some kind, if that would even be helpful. Um, but there's really no information that's coming cr across in these articles about the status of the dog other than Literally, they start their search and the following day, they do locate his dog. Today's searchers located the missing person's dog and are asking the public to contact the sheriff's office regarding any potential sighting or known where, whereabouts. The missing person is identified as being John Davis, 48-year-old male, standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing 220 pounds with brown hair and blue eyes, last seen wearing camouflage rain jacket, neon green pants with reflective stripe thankfully uh you know the camouflage rain jacket's one thing that might make it tough to spot him for searchers or, or aerial searches that are going on but neon green pants with reflective stripe um that could be something that could be very helpful to search efforts and uh i, I hope that it comes through as of right now uh they're still searching we do have a development that literally just came in within the past 24 hours which we'll we'll touch on uh but here is that missing pro poster that gave me the coordinates once again just very thankful that they would think to do this but there's a reason for it the family has been looking for help they've been looking for people to come out and do these searches with them um and how do you get people to that exact location you can't run a search in google maps for eight mile bridge it just doesn't come up so they're using the gps coordinates 
They have a little detail down here. Um, so once again, they're just saying the camouflage rain jacket, neon green pants with a reflective stripe. But down below, Johnny and his son were camping and hunting in the area and awoke to water in the tent due to sudden bad weather that hit the area. His son headed to the car. Johnny headed out to hunt one last time and never returned. His son is safe. Local law enforcement is not searching anymore. The family will not stop until he is found. Uh, no doubt about that. I can tell you the... Uh, what I'm seeing online that's being put out by the family shows that they're extremely passionate, motivated. They're not going to let this thing go. Uh, they're looking to get help any which way they can. There's been some tough words, uh, tough words for law enforcement that I'm seeing out there. Uh, also, we've got a bit of uh, private property that is kind of around this area. And it looks like they've been having some cooperation from owners. Other owners, it seems like, aren't cooperating there was one that was kind of disturbing that I read about where uh, it had mentioned, and please keep in mind, this is just social information that's being kicked around on Facebook. I haven't corroborated this. I don't know how accurate it is, and that's why I'm not going to put out any names or anything. But in one particular instance, they were saying that there was a landowner that was not only denying them access to their property, but actually went and took down trail cams that they had set up. Um you know, cameras that you would essentially have out there to uh, get some animals that are coming through or, you know, keep some type of monitoring on your property. Why would you take those down? Uh, I don't know. So just some pretty disturbing things that the family has been facing, actually even more disturbing than that. We'll get to that a little bit later. Um, one of the other things I did read, and please keep in mind, we've got multiple family members talking about this in different ways. Uh, one post I saw in particular said that law enforcement leaned pretty hard on Johnny's son about what happened out there. So I know in making this video, I'm inviting a bunch of people that don't know anything about this situation to come and learn about it. I'm hoping it's going to motivate you to possibly help if you're local, if you're out there, if you have skills that can be beneficial to these search efforts, please, please get out there and let me know you did because I will thank you personally. Um, but even if you're not in that position, I'm hoping just knowing Johnny's story, maybe you'll go follow the Facebook page. Maybe you'll take a look at their GoFundMe, make a little donation there. Um, there's all kinds of different ways to help this family. And with the things that they've faced, I think they, they really, really need it. And with how early we are in this, this case, this is a very, very young missing persons case at this point. Um, but let me just put it out there. I, cause I know people are going to theorize about this. Does his son have anything to do with it? According to what I'm seeing put out socially by the family, his son has been thoroughly vetted. His son has been cleared. So let's go ahead and continue with the other information that might be helpful. Uh, we've got a couple of photos here from krcrtv.com of the search efforts. And quite honestly, these look like pretty, pretty good search efforts. We're going to see there's some, um, work that is coming across different, facilities that are local to this area, not so local. There's people that are coming in to try to help on this. By some counts, I'm seeing that as many as 200 people have helped at one time or another with search efforts on this case. Uh, here's another photo we can see of them setting up a command center and obviously giving out some instructions for what they're going to be doing in terms of a search that day. We've got this guy standing on, it looks like a sheriff's office ATV. Um, so but this is pretty, I mean, look at this terrain. This could be pretty, pretty tough in terms of search. And outside of that, uh, there's some other environmental factors here. Over at cacreeks.com, they have an article, and this is really more for kayaking or river rafting, but it's talking about the Eel River in particular. And I just kind of wanted to share a sense with you about uh, what, what type of land we're talking about out there. Paddlers could easily see black bear, deer, otter, mink, wild pig, and fox. Also keep an eye out for mountain lion, rattlesnake, and poison oak. Pretty, pretty rough country that we've got going on out there. Most of the land is privately owned. Another big consideration. Uh, you know, we, we still talk about this on the Brandon Lawson case whenever I get together with Jason Watts. Thankfully, most of those landowners have that case has been raised to such a level that they've kind of been opening themselves up and allowing for more searches on their property. This case, so new, such little exposure. I don't think that that, that tilt has happened here yet. Hopefully it will hope maybe this video will help with that. Um, 
BLM land with good camping access appears in the middle. Uh, what is BLM? That is the Bureau of Land Management. Basically means that that land is owned federally. And in most cases, it's owned and maintained so that it could be used by the public. So uh, it, this is one of those tough things. You know, you've got weird weather conditions, harsh weather conditions that push into the area. You've got him trying to figure out uh, what he's going to do with his campsite. And what does that mean exactly? Like, how much equipment are we talking about? His son has gone back to the car. So uh, are we talking about, like, was this enough to fit on a backpack of his? I believe he was out there for a number of days. I think it's as many as three days, according to some of the information I'm seeing. So I would think he's probably running pretty lean in terms of, you know, the, the type of camping gear that he's carrying around. And if his son took off and he decided to pack everything up um, and then carry it with him. It just it's it seems like it's probably going to be a, a little bit of a of a leaner camping kit than you know like if I was good to go out camping or something like that, um, but if he's dealing with something, we've got animal elements, we've got all kinds of different uh, potential threats out in this area. Could he have wandered off the um, BLM property? Could he be on private property? Uh, certainly a possibility and something to be concerned about. But even here, once again, just to kind of echo the concerns we talked about earlier, um, they're pointing out here for people that do go kayaking or, or river rafting in this area, uh, side hiking should be done with caution during the spring and summer because you are in marijuana country. Hikers, even on BLM property, could walk into a garden. So once again, just potential threat. You just, you never know who's managing that garden. Are they there legally? If they're not, they might have security defenses of their own that you don't want to run into. Uh, this Hearst section of the Eel River has claimed many canoes of those not prepared to run these class two and three rapids. So just um, big concerns about the water. And of course, hearing the story that we've heard here, uh, the river is effectively coming up and ruining the camp that they had set up. Is law enforcement concerned about the water as well? Yes, absolutely. Uh, here we have a post from October 27th, 2021, and this is over at kimkemp.com. Family of Missing Hunter asks community to help with search this morning. We need everyone who can come, his mother told us. And if you go looking through the links I have down below, and of course near the top, I'll have all the Facebook groups that you should go check out on this case. You're going to see the calls for help, the cries for help. It's kind of heartbreaking because it seems like there's a good wave of attention that maybe lasts a matter of days and then that kind of dies off. And even during that, the family's kind of told not to do their own searches, which is, we've heard that in cases before. Um, but then the professional searches die down, the personal and the family searches try to spin up and they're able to get some people out there, but not always. And then sometimes, uh, you know, you're seeing a post about, Hey, we were supposed to search, but we couldn't cause no one showed up. Uh, so certainly heartbreaking, but other concerns as well. Let's take a look at their GoFundMe page. And I believe this is run by his sister, Jenny Lawrence. On October 24th at 7.30 p.m., we got the call from my nephew, Adam Davis, that his dad didn't come to the car where they were supposed to meet. We waited till Monday morning to contact the police to report that my brother was missing on BLM federal public land. We watched deputies roll into the command post. As they rolled in, they told us that we were not allowed to search, and if they caught us searching in any of the area, they would pull our search for our brother. By 3 p.m. Thursday, they took our parents up to the command post and had already started to call off the search. Now, keep in mind, uh, Saturday night is when the water comes into the tent. So early Sunday morning hours is when he goes missing. Uh, they're saying effectively here by Thursday, it seems like the professional search efforts were done. And I think it's reasonable to think there might be a shift at that point. They might have thought it was a rescue effort up to that point. Maybe from law enforcement's perspective, it's no longer a rescue effort after that. Um, I, I'm not necessarily sure why, especially if you have someone that's an experienced outdoorsman. Uh, you know, he could probably live off the land for a sustained period, a long period of time. So uh, I'm kind of curious about that aspect. 
for the last two weeks, it's been just family and friends searching. We have called and made complaints that we have been shot at, as well as getting weird messages from people claiming they have our brother and wanting ransom for his return. I just, I don't know why people do this to these families that are in these terrible situations. When calling the sheriff's office and reporting this, they said that they get the same calls about the same thing happening with other people. We were told by the Mendocino County Sheriff that we have to deal with it. We're asking the media to please get our story out and we're hoping that the FBI will see this and get us the help that my brother deserves. <sighs> Goodness. Um, oh, back at uh, kimkemp.com, family and friends ask for help again on October 30th, 2021. Another article, searchers for missing hunter Johnny Davis are gathering at the Eight Mile Bridge. Family and friends are asking for help from anyone who lives in the area or has hunted there. They set up a Facebook page. Of course, I'll have a link to that in the description box down below. It urges everyone who would like to search is asked to wear reflectors, download Onyx map app, and bring walkie talkies. At the Updates on Johnny Davis Facebook page, uh, you can actually see some maps of the search efforts that they're doing. And it just, it makes me wonder what the heck would I do if I was in their shoes? If I had a loved one that I thought was out there in the middle of the wilderness, like what would I do? And we're, we're kind of, we've seen this, of course, with uh, the Maya Miliete case this year, the focus that her sister has put on those search efforts going out weekend after weekend buying all kinds of equipment, uprooting her life. Um, I, I don't know how a caring family member doesn't do that in this case. And uh, Johnny's family is certainly doing all the work that they can on that front. But then it's also heartbreaking to hear this kind of like, you know, bring walkie talkies like this. This is an effort that they just they need all the help that they can get. And that was really a big motivating factor in terms of uh, me taking on this case and, and trying to share it with you guys here today. Uh, continuing another article, and hey, let's give a shout out to Kim Kemp as well for being one of the sources that's reporting on this reliably. Uh, this is over at Redheaded Black Belt, uh, KimKemp.com. Mendocino County Sheriff's Op Office Captain Greg Van Patten told us Davis and his son were sleeping in a tent next to the Eel River on the night of Saturday, October 23rd. 2021. The pair awoke to find the inside of their tent was getting wet from the rising river, Captain Van Patten explained. According to Van Patten, Davis's son chose to go to sleep in the car while Davis indicated he was going to relocate the tent and sleep longer before hunting in the morning. And that's another important aspect of this. Um, not only is Johnny missing, from what I can see, they haven't identified any new campsite that he set up. And I believe all the equipment, now, once again, this is probably not a huge amount of equipment, but he, at least a tent, uh, that stuff hasn't been found either. The next morning, Davis did not return to the car. And soon after, Davis was reporting missing to the MCSO. Based on these circumstances, Captain Van Patten said, investigators now suspect that the father went missing in the river, either as a result of rising water or trying to cross the river to make it to the hunting location. Uh, very troubling, especially when you combine that with the information that we read back here on the rafting site about this. You know, it this river has claimed canoes for people that didn't think that they were gonna bump into rapids. Could someone possibly underestimate the power of the river when it's got all that water pouring into it from, uh, from a downpour? It's, it's certainly possible. MCSO's uh, search and rescue team has dedicated at least four operational days to the search for Davis. That pretty much lines up with the information we're seeing at the GoFundMe. Search and rescue personnel from Alameda County, Contra Costa County, Sonoma County, San Mateo County, Napa County, uh, Placer County, Nevada County, Bay Area Mountain Rescue, Cal ESAR, and the California Air National Guard have assisted in the search. So you can see they did they rang the bells. They pulled in the help that they could. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like it was a very focused, kind of concise time frame for all this help to come in, and they didn't find what they were looking for. They didn't find Johnny. Significant efforts have been made to search the banks of the Eel River, and the California Air National Guard deployed a Hawk helicopter to search the river from above. 
At the same time, the family of Davis and sympathetic members of the public have organized searches and reportedly gained permission by nearby property owners to comb the areas Davis could be located. And that's another thing to remember in this. You've got some property owners that probably aren't going to be so helpful like we've already spoken about here, but other people that are opening their hearts, opening their, their land to letting these people on. And one of the other conditions, uh, just in case any of Johnny's family is out there watching this, uh, one of the other conditions that we learned about in the Brandon Lawson case, when they were asking for permission from these property owners, it actually helped if you could offer them a waiver. Essentially, you say, hey, we want to search your property, and we are agreeing that anyone that is searching your property is not going to hold you responsible for anything that happens on that property. And you want to do that, particularly in areas where you've got country that could be a little rough, because what if you have searchers go out there? someone breaks a leg, something bad like that happens. And then the property owner is wondering, oh, great, you know, are they going to come after my insurance? Are they going to come after me? Um, so something that we learned from, and big shout out to Jason Watts, uh, from the Brandon Lawson case is you can find documentation. You can find basically a contract that you can offer the landowner so that it will absolve them of those concerns, hopefully get those gates opened up for you guys and get those search efforts on their private property. Now, Johnny's daughter, Emily, uh, who's pretty vocal on Facebook in particular with what's going on here, uh, and actually comes out to be part of the search effort and then has to leave because she's giving birth to Johnny's grandchild, another grandchild for Johnny. Uh, Emily has some pretty strong words here just a few weeks in that I wanted to share with you guys just to give you a little bit of the sentiment and the the emotions that are coming with dealing with uh, having a, a missing loved one like this. My dad has spent his whole life doing everything for everyone else. I've seen him touch the hearts of people who nobody cared about and changed their life. He taught me to see the best in everyone. My dad is one of the best people you could ever be associated with. He would give you the shirt off his back and has done so over and over again. And... I've been doing my best to keep calm and pray and just have faith in God. But while my world is turned upside down and my dad is missing, I look around and all these people he helped, where are you? Two people searched for my dad today. Two. I can't even take care of my kid and will be there for her right now because I'm a complete mess. I'm doing everything in my power to figure out what to do. I've never been in a situation like this. I feel so overwhelmed. That's just a post, guys. That's just a tiny taste of what is going on, not just in Emily's mind and coming out through her words, but just a tiny little window into what's going on in this young woman's heart and in the heart of the rest of Johnny's family as well. And it's only two weeks in that she's making this post, asking where everyone is. Over at PressDemocrat.com, uh, from November 4th, we get a little more information. More than 200 searchers have combed about 22 miles of wilderness looking for Davis near the campsite which was about four miles east of mile marker eight on Highway 162, Van Patten said. But as of Thursday of that week, the Mendocino County Sheriff's Office was the only agency still looking for him. The Sheriff's Office is now focusing its search on the river, looking for Davis in the water and along the banks. He was an accomplished hunter and camper, Van Patten said. We feel we would have come across him if he was on the land still. Searchers found Davis's dog the day after he was reported missing, but they have not located his tent or any of his belongings. Um, and there's some other information about a potential sighting that I wanted to share with you guys, because uh, that's going to make us look a little differently at the map. And I'll, I'll kind of point out where I think they were camping. Uh, John Davis went missing, and since then, two very different search efforts have taken shape. The Mendocino County Sheriff's Office says it found new evidence last week during an aerial search and is planning to send a team in on foot to check it out. The civilians are conducting a search of their own, and according to a crowdfunding effort posted by a family member, they've been shot at by the locals. 
The public should keep in mind that private property owners have rights that prevent people from unlawfully accessing their land, said Captain Greg Van Patten. This also applies to law enforcement and mainly prevents us from accessing someone's land without first getting owner consent. It's believed Mr. Davis went missing in the swift water of the Eel River. Due to the extended period of Mr. Davis's disappearance, this is becoming more of a search and recovery mission as opposed to a search and rescue mission. So it's very clear in the sergeant's words there directly that uh, the focus, the kind of intense focus, all the resources that were there early on at that point, it was really a rescue mission. And now uh, it has certainly shifted gears. They haven't put a team on the ground in more than a week, but Tuesday, November 23rd, MCSO searched 15 to 20 miles downriver from Davis's campsite from the air with assistance from a California Highway Patrol helicopter. The aerial team found an item of clothing as well as some material they think may have been part of a raft. Now, I haven't found any other information about them having any type of raft. Uh, and they even note here that they're not sure that these items are connected to Davis. What I'm curious about is if they, they're seeing something that they think might be part of a raft, could that actually be part of a tent? Uh, and I'm also curious about the item of clothing. Is it something that they might recognize that Davis was known to be carrying with him, if not known to be wearing? Like it, I think they would have come out if, if it would have been something as obvious as it matched the description of his pants or his jacket. I don't think it's that obvious. And uh, they're being pretty clear here that they're not finding a direct correlation, but they're going to send guys in on the ground to retrieve that stuff and make sure they're in the planning stages of another ground search. Meanwhile, the missing families, the missing man's family says they will continue to look for him night and day. And this article literally posted within the last 20 hours. This is the absolute latest on what's happening with this case. So one article I found said that he was seen and it actually said he was seen by a property owner. I don't know if uh, that was accurate information. It might be. Um, or if this is just information that actually came from Adam that has somehow uh, been kind of repeated improperly. But the information is he was seen at Indian Creek and he was traveling in the direction of Brushy Creek. Uh, so Indian Creek, we could see here, is kind of uh, east of the Eight Mile Bridge location. And I'm seeing other information that says they were camping about four miles down the river east of the highway. So I think their camp was probably around this location. I don't know if it was exactly on Indian Creek, um, but just in terms of these two explanations I'm hearing, it seems like they're pretty close to around here. Um, but he's headed in the direction of Brushy Creek. I don't know where their vehicle is parked. I would have to assume it's somewhere back near the actual highway. So it could have been that he was, I don't know if he was heading on his way out or just trying to head. It looks like um, this is kind of a hill here. Uh, actually, I think there's hills on both sides. Unfortunately, we can't get to the ground level there, but let's take a look from the road and see. Yeah, it's hills on both sides. So it wouldn't have been him necessarily just going for higher ground because he could do that on either side of the river there. And that's it. That's it for the news that is currently publicly available on this case. Like I told you guys, not a whole lot there, but it's about getting support to this family. It's about raising awareness to this case. I need your help to do that. So please share this video with any friends that you have in the Northern California area. Let's help the Davis family uh, get some more supporters. I think that's really the mission here for today's video. And on that front, let's take a look again at this GoFundMe. What exactly are they raising funds for? I'm doing this to help fundraise my parents with the expenses in search of my brother, Johnny Davis. As of right now, they're staying in a hotel. Both of my parents have medical issues, but that doesn't stop them from looking for their son. My parents are looking for a place down in Cabello to lease for the time that they're searching. The funds will also be used in Johnny's recovery for the day we find him such as medical treatment, food, clothing, and other bills for Johnny's recovery, as well as any family that comes down to help search, such as gas, food, etc. I mean, think of all the things, all the expenses that you take on uh, just when you're taking a trip for yourself. 
that's what this family is having to do, but with every family member that can get down there. So this could be a serious, serious financial strain. As the days get longer and the nights get colder, we ask for the public's help. Please help us with our journey of searching for my brother, Johnny Davis. And uh, they are looking to raise $20,000. And quite honestly, um, that for, for this type of search effort, uh, this early on, that is more than reasonable. Uh, and especially, think about this, you've got a remote area. This isn't a place where, uh, even if you do get some national level coverage, um, how, how many people are you gonna get to actually volunteer their time? You're gonna have to be calling in resources or taking the approach they're taking, kind of funding long-term extended stays there where you can get that family out there maybe every day of the week taking on a, a different part of that wilderness, uh, talking to different property owners. There's there's a lot that has to go on around a search like this. Uh, and right now, they are at $675. Brain scratchers. First of all, thank you to my supporters on Patreon, PayPal, those of you that buy merchandise. Thank you guys so much. We're going to make a donation together, and I'm going to try to get us kick-started on this, but I need your guys' help. I really want to get this amount to $1,000 this weekend. Can you just take a moment for me, please? And whatever you could put in here, please give it to this family. If we can just give them a couple more nights in a hotel down there, you never know. That could honestly make the difference in a case like this. So please join me. A big thank you to everyone that's helping me make our donation. But on top of that, if you guys can dig just a little bit deeper for this family, I would really, really appreciate it. Keep in mind, uh, this case is young, no name is profile, uh, no real national level of coverage. They they need all the support that they can get. Uh, even at Web Sleuths, four posts on this right now. It's just, it needs more care. It needs more support. And if you can't do that, do the next best thing. Uh, we've got the Help Us Find Johnny Davis link that is down below. This is for updates on the case. Uh, all the search efforts that you want to see are here. The video clip that we started today's video with is here. You can see uh, different approaches that they're taking. Uh, you can see some of the maps, like I mentioned, about searches that they've conducted. Um, there's just a ton of information if you want to be helpful to the search efforts here. So please click that link below, come here, follow this page, and maybe you can be one of the deciding factors, something that brings a good change to this case for them. On top of that, there's another page which is Missing Johnny Davis. This also has some of that same information. It's kind of reposting some of the information from the other page, but the focus here is a little bit different. Uh, the intro says, we are missing our brother deeply. This is a page for stories, pictures, and for all who love him. So uh, a little bit of the search efforts, yes, but also they're looking for personal stories. I can tell you I'm seeing some posts from people, people that went to school with Johnny, people that had no idea he was missing, things like that. Um, but you know what? Take a moment. Please follow both of these pages and become part of the team that is trying to help this family bring Johnny Davis home. Finally, I just wanted to end with a, another post from Emily, this one from November 9th with a picture of her father. His smile and laugh is what plays in my head the most. I pray every day and something tells me that my dad is still alive and it's that little slice of hope that helps me make posts like this. I feel like we're getting close. We're going to find him soon, and I understand how crazy that might sound to some of you. And I understand he could be gone. But if there's a chance he's alive, the clock is ticking. So please, we can't find him without your help, without help. If you can please, please come search. Help me find my dad. And I wasn't joking. If any of you brain scratchers are in this area close enough to get out there to help with one of the search efforts, spend a little time, a few hours on an afternoon, let this family know that others are out there that care, uh, I will personally thank you. Send me an email at john at lordandarts.com and uh, I will certainly 
certainly take the time to thank you personally for being part of this amazing community and adding to their community. That's, that's really what today's video is about. Before I end today's video, I have to thank people that are keeping us funded here, able to do what we do. As you've noticed during this video, there was no commercials in the middle of it. We always do that because the information is what's important. A uh, big thank you to Shauna Blackwood for increasing her pledge on Patreon, as well as Casey Monks and Mike W, all with pledge increases on Patreon. And a big hello and thank you to new patron Tony Lee. Now, if you would like to help support the channel, please visit lordnarts.com. There you can sign up for Patreon, sign up for PayPal, buy merchandise, or even buy us a coffee like Perlette Toussaint recently did. We really appreciate your support as we try to help these families in these very, very tough situations. And thanks for being part of our team here and showing others that you care like we do. Take care, everyone. Have a nice weekend. I'll see you again on Monday with a brand new episode of Case Cracked right here on the Lord and Arts channel. Thank you.